Okay. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks. Uh, I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me here and uh, letting me uh, present. Uh, so, uh, uh, well, what I'm going to say is uh, a, a continuation of the research program that uh, we started with Paul Larson. Uh, uh, we, we together published a book, uh, Geometric Set Theory, that uh, uh, deals with many uh, uh, things uh, surrounding. Uh, you know, basically independence results uh, uh, the axiom of choice. And uh, this uh, this part of it, uh, it this is my, uh, you know, this is basically part of my pandemic research program somehow. Uh, and um, what I want to show you, uh, but, um, Yeah, great. Oops. Okay. So, uh, uh, so it's uh, basically a, a, a the uh, a program that uh, uh, allows you to separate uh, algebraic and uh, non-algebraic uh, 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 consequences of the axiom of choice. Of course, you can ask what uh, what it means in the first place. Uh, what are the algebraic uh, consequences of the axiom of choice, and what are the non-algebraic uh, sentences? And uh, and, uh, and it seems like it's really uh, vague, uh, but in fact, it's not. It, uh, it turns out that there is a clear uh, kind of, uh, separation uh, and uh, so so I will uh, look at. Uh, of examples of algebraic sentences, they're always uh, sigma two one sentences in the sense that they assert that uh, some uh, complicated uh, set of real uh, a set of reals uh, exists. And uh, the first one uh, uh, is that if you have a vector space X, which is Polish over let's say a countable field, then uh, it has a Hamel basis. Uh, if uh, if you have a Polish field X over some countable subfield uh, uh, that it has a transcendence basis. And then uh, some things about algebraic and sigma algebraic graphs. By sigma algebraic, I mean uh, graphs which are countable unions of algebraic graphs. Um, so uh, so if, uh, would be, there's a partition of Rn uh, into countably many pieces such that no piece contains a rational distance. This is a result of um, Komiat. Uh, and then uh, uh, you can uh, look at the same thing, except you you talk about instead of rational distances, you talk about uh, 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 Euclidean rectangles. That's not really a uh, consequence of the axiom of choice. You need uh, the, with the axiom of choice. This is equivalent to the uh, 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 continuum hypothesis, and there are many others, um, very many others, such as you know, given a, a sigma algebraic graph. Uh, it uh, uh, the, uh, the assertion that there exists a, um, um, a maximal independent set in it and su such stuff. Okay, uh, there's something about algebra in it. Um, but there are non-algebraic sentences. Uh, uh, many of them are uh, 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 consequences of the axiom of choice, but the last one is not. Uh, so. Uh, uh, so there's a non-principal ultra filter on omega and various uh, you know, variations of that. Uh, 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 there's a selector on a complicated Borel equivalence relation, complicated, let's say, uh, uh, um, by that I would mean uh, uh, probably turbulent uh, orbit equivalence relation of a turbulent action. Uh, Fubini theorem for ultra big measure fails. Uh, there's a uncountable universally null set. OCA, OCA is of course not uh, not an uh, not a sigma two one statement, and it's not uh, uh, imp uh, implied by the axiom of choice, but it's uh, uh, it in fact uh, kind of fits this discussion in some ways. Uh, and what I want to show you is that uh, there is in fact this is some sort of an um, uh, uh, machinery which separates the algebraic sentences from the non-algebraic ones. And uh, uh, this is an example of the theorem that uh, that uh, I was able to uh, show. Um, uh, I was able to prove, uh, and uh, so let, let's see. I, 
uh, it's in fact more uh, more of a theorem scheme than a single theorem. Uh, uh, so it is consistent relative to an inaccessible cardinal with uh, ZF plus dependent choices that, uh, and now there is, a, uh, there is an algebraic uh, type uh, uh, sentence in it. Uh, I chose R has transcendence basis over the rational numbers, but all of the others that I named uh, can stand in the, in the first line and even all of them simultaneously. Uh, and uh, and uh, then um, there's no non-principle ultra filter on omega. There's some strong. Uh, there's some variation of the Fubini theorem for outer Lebesgue measure. Uh, there is a. Uh, there's no uncountably uh, uncountable universally null set of reals. Uh, if you have an orbit equivalence relation of a turbulent Polish action, then it has no selector. OCAs holds in the, uh, the resulting model and so on, okay? And uh, somehow uh, there is a, um, uh, um, uh, there's a, there's a general methodology for producing things like this, which uh, shows you the difference between algebraic uh, um, sentences and uh, non-algebraic ones. Okay, so, uh, uh, one thing uh, that is also part of this technology is uh, uh, separation of uh, algebraic dimensions. Okay, many of these algebraic sentences uh, come with some sort of um, uh, dimension. The dimension is typically a natural number, uh, and uh, you can separate uh, algebraic sentences of uh, different dimension. Okay. Uh, this this is uh, again uh, sounds like it's vague, but in fact, when you uh, hit it uh, with the technology that I discovered, uh, it becomes uh, pretty uh, uh, clearly visible what uh, what the dimension is and how you can separate it, uh, how you can separate it uh, set, uh, from set theoretic point of view. So uh, so uh, uh, so the, here is one result. Uh, so uh, it is consistent relative to an inaccessible cardinal with ZF plus the axiom of dependent choices that there's a partition of R to the N into countably many pieces such that neither contains a rational distance, but uh, there is no such partition for R N plus one. Okay, so, uh, so the, uh, the problem of uh, uh, having a partition of R N uh, somehow is n-dimensional, and uh, you can solve it without ever touching the n plus one-dimensional problem. Okay, uh, and uh, uh, this, in fact, again, uh, this uh, rational distances are not. Uh, there's nothing uh, particularly uh, special about them. Uh, so, for example, you can find a variation of this theorem uh, where instead of rational distances, you talk about uh, Euclidean rectangles. Okay, so, uh, so, uh, so let me uh, stress, you know, you need uh, uh, to go into the choiceless con uh, context to, um, to see the differences, okay? Because if um, in ZFC, uh, having this partition uh, for rectangles in any dimension, this is equivalent to the continuum hypothesis. But in fact, in the choiceless context, you can see that the partitions for rectangles must be more difficult in higher dimensions, uh, more difficult to obtain in higher dimensions than they are in the the, uh, the, the lower ones. Okay. Yes. Is is the differentiation between R to the n and R to the n plus one gotten by collapsing some larger cardinal to L of n or something like that? Or uh, no. Uh, so uh, so uh, these uh, the models that uh, there's um, this has nothing to do with L of n. Okay. Nothing to do with L of n. Uh, these models, they're all the same and they're really quite innocent uh, from set theory point of view. You start with the, uh, the, the Solvay model and, uh, uh, and then uh, you find an extension of the choice of Solvay model with, the, uh, with um, a, a suitable sigma closed forcing, a definable sigma closed forcing. But uh, what's happening and what makes it, uh, you know, where the scale or the difficulty is, is that uh, um, in order to uh, actually control the extension, you have to uh, control amalgamation diagrams that I will talk about. Uh, and uh, the amalgamation diagrams, um, 
have uh, something like a dimension associated to them. Okay, I'll, I will talk about it a little bit, but it has nothing to do with other things. Okay, uh, um, that. Uh, 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 it's really more algebra than set theory. Yeah. Here, the problem of having a selector to a turbulent equivalence relation. Yeah. What happens if or equivalence relations which are classifiable by countable structures? Yeah. So, uh, um, um, so for example, here uh, with the uh, with the rational distances. So, if you look at the rational distances. Uh, in uh, uh, in one dimension, okay. So so having this partition, you're adding an E zero selector. Yeah, you're adding a vitalis set. Okay. So so having a, 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 um, a, a selector for let's say countable Borelli constellations. This is, uh, but uh, uh, but if you if you ask me, maybe uh, okay, uh, vitalis set is fine. But what about uh, you know uh, something like. Uh, uh, Non quality plus uh, non sigma uh, non sigma smooth and then, then I don't know okay uh, it's quite interesting but uh, the problems with uh, countable parallel constellations I don't know how to handle very well okay and uh, the more complicated uh, uh, equivalent relations classifiable by countable searches are also a mystery but but in in these cases you cannot add let's say a selector to uh, to F two you know, you cannot do that. All right, so how do you actually do it? Uh, uh, what, uh, how do, uh, uh, what is the set theory behind this, okay? Uh, uh, so uh, I will uh, uh, tell you how to connect algebra and forcing, and uh, uh, it's quite a, uh, it was uh, quite a mystery to me in the beginning, and uh, now uh, there's a uh, coherent theory. So, uh, so, uh, I will start with a simple uh, descriptive set theory concept. Uh, Noetherian subbasis. Okay, what is it? Um, I will um, draw a small picture. Uh, so you have a Polish space X on which you want to have a Noetherian topology. Okay, Noetherian topology meaning that uh, in it there, there is no descending sequence, no strictly uh, descending infinite sequence of closed sets. Okay, and uh, this one, uh, uh, Noetherian subbase, uh, the Noetherian topology, you want it to be suitably definable. So, uh, so the, the simplest way of, uh, of kind of looking at this is uh, uh, finding a closed set uh, in, in some product Y cross X. Okay, this is C, this is closed. Um, such that um, Y is just an index Polish space. Uh, the, the vertical sections are the, the, the generators uh, for the closed, uh, uh, notarian closed sets. And uh, it has this property that uh, there is no infinite strictly descending sequence of sets which would be intersections of finitely many vertical sections, okay? Uh, and uh, I, I didn't include an example, but a typical example of this would be, uh, uh, X would be a Euclidean space of some dimension, and, uh, and Y would parameterize all algebraic sets, okay? Uh, algebraic subsets of R to the N. Uh, so, uh, uh, so then uh, by, uh, uh, by the, um, uh, uh, by the uh, uh, basis theorem uh, for, uh, for, uh, for for algebraic sets, there is no infinite descending sequence of algebraic uh, of algebraic sets, and uh, so this would be a typical example. Okay, but there are some other uh, some other uh, uh, notary and spaces, and uh, this is just one uh, one possibility. Okay. Oh. Oh. This, this, this. Yeah, yeah. This is yeah. This, this is in the this is in the Polish topology. Okay, uh, yes. C is closed in the, so both Y and X are Polish spaces, and this is closed in the in the Polish topology of Y times uh, cross X. But of course, the Noetherian topology on X would be much smaller. Okay. Uh, um, uh, okay. Where is the forcing in it? Uh, so it's on the next slide. Okay, uh, so, uh, so, so suppose that you have a, a noetherian 
basis, okay, uh, or rather in subbasis. Uh, so suppose that you have a transitive model of ZFC and a set of subset of the space X on which there is the Noetherian topology. Uh, uh, then um, uh, let me. Um, 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 so, uh, so suppose that you have a. Um, it's a M is a transitive uh, uh, transitive model of ZFC, and you outside of it, possibly outside uh, of it, uh, you have a you have a set A subset of X, and it can be an arbitrary. Uh, it can be arbitrary set, but uh, uh, but typically it's closed. Okay, uh, closed in the uh, in the Polish topology or even in the Noetherian topology. Okay, and then uh, uh, then uh, the, the the point is that in M you can find some sort of algebraic envelope of A. What is it? It's the intersection of all uh, sets which are in the subbases, uh, well, and they're in M, and uh, uh, they still uh, cover A. And so, uh, so, so you look at all algebraic sets in M, which which cover which cover A, okay? and then take the intersection. The point is that uh, because uh, the no uh, Noetherian topologies they don't uh, allow any um, um, uh, infinite descending sequences, this intersection that's there is in fact an intersection of a finite. Uh, uh, subset, uh, uh, and uh, therefore this is in M. Okay, so 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 the, the CMA uh, uh, is some algebraic set which which is which is in M. It's the smallest algebraic set which belongs to M and contains A as a subset. Okay, and then uh, then uh, there is a uh, as uh, as always uh, when you want to uh, prove something that uh, uh, is independent of the axiom of choice somehow. Uh, then there is an uh, uh, th th there is some sort of um, uh, amalgamation diagram. Um, so um, I will define, um, let's say, there's a, uh, there's a ground model, uh, and it has two generic extensions. Uh, uh, And I, I, I will say that uh, they are uh, mutually noetherian if whenever you, uh, uh, you have a set A in the right ear and you look at uh, the algebraic envelope on it in the left ear, in fact, you're getting the same set as when you're in the round model, okay? So, uh, so C uh, VG zero A uh, is in fact equal to C uh, VG zero, uh, sorry, okay, and vice versa, okay. Um, so, uh, so well, why? Uh, what is the what is the problem here? The thing is that in principle there are more algebraic sets in this model than there are in V. So in principle this could become smaller than the al uh, algebraic uh, uh, envelope of A. But uh, uh, but uh, you say that uh, they are well, mutually noetherian when this doesn't occur. Okay, so uh, and then uh, you can also uh, what when you say two generic extensions by the same poset or by just arbitrary? Uh, arbitrary, uh, uh, completely arbitrary. Um, they, they are uh, probably in some sort of uh, ambient forcing extension, but the, the nature of that ambient forcing extension is unimportant. Okay, uh, so uh, so I want uh, I want to um, uh, also uh, what you can do you can. Uh, Define the cruel dimensions of uh, Noetherian subbases, and you can kind of restrict this uh, this notion of uh, Noetherian to uh, subbases of dimension of a given cruel dimension, okay, uh, smaller than some number. Uh, probably uh, uh, there are many more variations than uh, than I can see right now. And there are examples of this, and it's interesting to uh, to uh, uh, to see uh, how you can actually find uh, diagrams of this type. And one of them is uh, when uh, the ears are mutually generic, but this is somehow uh, an elementary thing, okay? That doesn't really get you anywhere. But uh, what, is, uh, what is interesting is that uh, if you take mutually random extensions, okay, uh, 
then then they are not mutually generic then, but uh, they are that uh, 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 they are mutually unitarian. Then uh, there is an interesting case which uh, uh, which uh, talks about uh, uh, Borel equivalence relations. If you have a group that a uh, Polish group that acts turbulently on uh, on a Polish space X. And now shoot uh, mutually cohen elements of the group and of the uh, of the of the space. When you when you look at the generic point of the space and the generic uh, uh, um, uh, um, shift of the uh, of the of the point, then they will they will give you uh, mutually unitarian extensions. And uh, uh, and. Uh, uh, now uh, the the last one uh, uh, so uh, talks about um, uh, Euclidean spaces. Uh, so you shoot a generic pair of distance one, x zero x one. Okay. So what does it mean? You look at the set of all points of uh, of pair of look at the set of all pairs of points of distance one. This is a closed set. So it's a Polish space. So there's a Cohen forcing associated to it. Okay, and uh, so uh, so you look at the uh, the generic pair uh, and uh, uh, and look at vx zero and vx one. These are not mutually generic extensions because uh, x zero and x one, after all, have distance one, but uh, but they happen to be uh, uh, noter mutually notary and uh, uh, of dimension n. Okay. Um, so, uh, but there are many other examples that I can't uh, 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 I can't uh, list in my time. Uh, so, uh, so and here is the uh, uh, so here is the uh, the the key trick of, uh, that connects of the key notion that uh, that connects uh, um, algebra and forcing. Uh, uh, so. Um, so there's always this notion of balance when you want to prove something uh, uh, independent, uh, you know, some variation of uh, axiom of choice uh, independent from another uh, another one, uh, and that's this. Um, so suppose that uh, uh, P is an analytic forcing. That means it, it's just a partial order on a Polish space, and it's uh, you know uh, the set of conditions is analytics, uh, an analytic set, and the ordering is analytic, and uh, uh, then. Um, um, uh, uh, so, so now let Q be a, um, a, a, another forcing, completely different one, probably a collapse, a large collapse of something, and tau be a name uh, for a uh, for a condition in P. Okay, and I will say that this pair Q tau is noetary and balanced if. And now, now this uh, whatever follows um, might sound difficult to uh, understand, but in fact, it's a key thing, and uh, uh, it's very flexible. Uh, so, um, uh, so whenever, uh, uh, so whenever you take two noetarian extensions, uh, VG zero, VG one. Uh, yeah, there are two. Q, Q, Q extensions. Uh, no, no, they don't have to be Q extensions. Arbitrary. It is really important. And, but inside of them, there are some Q extensions. Okay, so, so it's, inside of it, there is a, uh, there's a, uh, there's a, let's say, uh, H0 subset of Q and is H1 subset of Q. And, uh, and there's tau over H1 and there's tau over H2, uh, tau over H0 here. Okay, and whenever I uh, strengthen these things, uh, but still within the mutually unitarian extensions, then uh, then these conditions are compatible. Okay, so this uh, this uh, this is what I wanted to say in the first uh, in the first item. So, it, it, the, so it's a it's not a balanced. Um, uh, you know the pair Q tau is notary and balanced if uh, if you have this. Uh, now uh, you might think, what what notion is this? Who who has that? And uh, you know how can you get it? Uh, uh, but in fact, it's uh, uh, it, it's kind of very simple. So for example, if you force uh, um, 
algebra, uh, transcendence basis for, uh, for the real numbers over the rationals with countable approximations. Okay, so it's just a uh, force with countable, approx countable uh, uh, transcendentally independent algebraically independent sets, okay? Then, uh, then you look at uh, any uh, um, uh, transcendental basis of R over Q. This is not a condition because it's not countable, but after some uh, collapsing forcing, it be will become countable and it will be a condition, okay? And in fact, this, this thing is, exa is exactly the, an example of a noetherian balanced condition, okay? So whenever you take uh, uh, two noetherian, uh, 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 mutually noetherian extensions, and then you extend this to an uh, algebraic independent, algebraically independent set here and algebraically independent set here, then the union of the two will be again algebraically independent. Roughly, this is for example, okay? And, uh, and then uh, uh, you see, you say that uh, the partial order P is not very unbalanced if below every condition there is a balanced pair. So for example, uh, if you look at the post set of uh, algebraically independent countable subsets of the reals, it will be not very unbalanced because any, any one of them can be extended to a, a, a to, to an authoritarian, uh, to to an algebraic basis, okay? uh, transcendence basis. Or with respect to what? Oh, it, it depends on. Is it for every Q? Yeah, yeah. For, uh, no, no. Below every condition, there is a balanced pair so on, some, on some Q. On some Q. Uh, it, it's interesting. Uh, uh, you probably want to have an understanding of what the balanced pairs are. And uh, typically uh, the cues that you're looking at are collapse, uh, collapses of uh, the reals. But the, it can be more complicated than, than that. And it's, it, it's a, uh, you know, the theory behind this, is a lot of unresolved uh, questions, you know, methodological questions. But, uh, but typically Q is some sort of collapse of, um, uh, to All right, uh, uh, so, uh, and the main point uh, uh, behind this is that uh, many algebraic sigma 2, 1 sentences can be forced over the choiceless Solovey model by a noetherian and balanced forcing. So, uh, uh, and, um, and uh, then there's a, uh, uh, there's, actually, there are many preservation theorems that say that uh, uh, if you have non-algebraic uh, Sentences typically sigma to one, they will fail in uh, noetherian and balanced extensions of the Solvay model. Okay, uh, so um, uh, so um, uh, so th uh, this is uh, th th this main point is kind of like in proper forcing. Okay, uh, you're you're learning how to uh, construct uh, um, uh, how to construct partial orders. Which um, uh, which add a sigma two one sentence, okay? Uh, and typically these are uh, it can be difficult, but uh, uh, typically they are just countable approximations of some type, okay? And then uh, then you prove a preservation theorem, uh, which uh, will say that <clears throat> uh, that let's say uh, there is no uh, non-principal ultra filter, no other end balanced extension of the Solvay model. Um, um, uh, so these, pres uh, there, these preservation theorems, um, there is no single one uh, uh, in this case. I mean, I just keep proving uh, more, uh, more and more of them, but, uh, uh, but um, back. So, uh, so these are some of the things that uh, that I was able to show. So, for example, no. Uh, so, uh, so for example, in the um, noetherian and balanced extensions, there are non uh, non measurable sets of reals. Uh, that's true, but uh, still, a Fubini theorem of some type. I would have to specify precisely what uh, it, it actually uh, uh, actually holds. Uh, and also OCA holds, okay, and, uh, for some reason, but uh, there are no uncountable universally null sets of reals. There are no uh, 
ultra filters. And uh, th this list is uh, uh, this list can be uh, extended, uh, um, not indefinitely, but uh, you know for a long time. But anyway, uh, I think uh, my time is over, and this is all uh, I wanted to say. Uh, your attention. <laughs>